Anyway, I wanted to welcome everybody to another um, ATBA uh, Wednesday webinar. And uh, we've got a great guest lined up as always, but a couple of uh, things I want to talk about first. Uh, there's a filing out there that folks need to be aware of. Um, in the unlicensed white space device operations in the television band, that's docket number 20-36. And uh, everybody should take a look at that. And uh, the NAB recently uh, filed uh, uh, comments in that particular uh, docket. And you'll find uh, some information about that on the broadcastingalliance.org website in our news feed. But uh, for the moment, we're going to uh, jump right in and say hello to Heidi uh, with Titan TV. And uh, she wow. is one of our board members with the ATBA. And she has some exciting things to share uh, for us in regards to um, Antenna Web. And so, Heidi, if you'll just take it away, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself and your background in the television world and uh, what you had to show for us today. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. My name again is Heidi Stefan. I am the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Titan TV, Inc. I've been with Titan TV now 13 and a half years. Uh, I started off actually originally in radio and then came to Titan TV, worked my way from sales all the way up to where I am today. Um, very active, not only on what we call our broadcast tools, but also on the consumer side. And that's what I'm going to talk about today is one of our consumer sites, which is antennaweb.org. Think of this as a consumer site that's going to educate consumers on what channels they can get free over the air with an antenna, provide them some information about what antennas there are out there, including some springboard partners that can go purchase antenna. And then we recently just rolled out more information or information on the site related to next gen television and in the results, what next gen television stations are up in each market. Also with that, that we know a lot of these users that come to this site are more tech savvy and are younger, we've actually added a schedule now, it's called My Schedule, from based on the results that that individual did for the, on the homepage, on the results page of what is actually on those channels 14 days out. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through this site. If you have any questions, um, please put them in the question and we can walk through those uh, throughout it or um, at the end. So the first thing, again, I want to point out, it is antennaweb.org. This site was originally built for the digital transition back in 09. We have partnered originally with the CTA and NAB as part of this site for that transition. Once the digital transition was over, it really became um, over to Titan TV and we've managed it from there. We are still very uh, partners with both CTA and NAB on this site. But it's really used for consumers now and even some installers as far as what channels I get free over the air. So the first thing you can see right here is this, put your address in. I always suggest put your full actual physical home address if you know it, or if you just know a zip code. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Phoenix since that was one of the first markets to go uh, next gen. We'll put that in. So the zip code here is 85035. The other thing I should note, and you should note to consumers too, as they're looking at this, if you put this, it says a tunnel will be installed 30 feet or above the ground, makes a really big difference in the results. So you should ask them, are you going to put the antenna on the outside of your house on a roof? Then they need to check this. You will actually get more signals with an antenna there than you would, for example, an indoor antenna on your first floor. So that check bar could actually change the results. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that zip code in it go. So what this is doing, this is our proprietary signal prediction service that is hitting. The other thing I'm going to note with antenna web, the results are very conservative as far as the signals that they're going to get from their location. If you put in just a zip code, it's going to put it in the middle of that zip code area as far as the signal prediction. But I know even in our area in Cedar Rapids, if I put in my address on one side versus an address on the other side of town, I'm actually gonna get two different stations or multiple different stations. So that's why, again, if they can put their actual address, you're gonna get a better results. And then the other idea too, is that they're gonna get, when they actually put up an antenna, they might actually get more than what you see on antenna web. But again, we wanna under deliver over, or 
over under promise over deliver. So some things I just want to point out here, just so that if you are talking to consumers or you just want to know about your station and how it shows up on the site. So the big thing that I always try to promote to any of my friends that, hey, you know, you can just get an antenna to get free over the air. I said, for example, this one, there are 37 stations over the air that provide 147 channels. So if you think of a cable lineup, that's basically a cable lineup and all this is is an antenna over there. Oh yeah, that is just much, that's, that's much better than cable in some places. Yes. And so it's, that's our first cable. thing. Um, and then we do have a little bit about this next gen, but I'll kind of go down here first. I'm gonna walk through this page and then I'll go back up to go there. So we do have this ready to buy. So we do have antenna partners. So if someone was interested in purchasing antenna, now that they know what they can get, they can go back up here. And I'll touch base on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this antenna type color codes. For, to actually learn more about, you can click on this link, it goes to a whole page about antennas. Now these color codes are designated by the CES. And for antenna manufacturers, they actually have to be certified or have that license or permission to use this, what we call our color code or color wheel on their antenna based on the CS and have to be a CS member. And this though is for only for outdoor antennas. The CES does not have any sort of antenna type colors for indoor antennas, which from a consumer side can be very confusing. But I just kind of want to note that out for you. Now these come into play down here. So those would we say 47 stations? So you'll see all of them over here. And you'll see they'll start with the yellow one. So that means it's not far from my location. So if I actually scroll down to the map, it gives me all of those and I can zoom in or out. So it's basically using Google Maps and I can zoom. But up here, this is going to show me all those stations. And it's going to say yellow, only a yellow antenna as I keep going. And you'll know all of a sudden there's this check mark that showed up for next gen television. One thing I want to note, if you're not familiar, the, when we have like KSAZ DT, now for next gen television, it's KSAZ dash NG. Now for low power stations, what we're seeing is like KSAZ dash NL for a next gen low power, um, low digital station. And then I keep scrolling and then I get to green. And let's say I want to make sure I at least get this one. It's my TV. I'm going to at least get a violet, an antenna that has a violet, right? So I have an idea. I know what I want. I know what kind of, I need at least an antenna that has a violet. So then I can go up here. Let's say I click on channel master and it says I have options. So I have what they call good, better, best, or best. And the best is going to give me all of those color codes that I want to hopefully get all my stations. I click on that. That's going to take me off to their site for different options. And here I can return to options. So let's say I've now have seen what channels I get, but what are on those channels? Do I even want to watch all those? Or are they just a bunch of um, info commercials? That's where we went ahead and added this new feature to Antenna Web, where it says you're ready, your schedule is ready. So if I click on my schedule now, this is going to take me to basically it's like if you're familiar with our Titan TV Next Gen guide, it looks just like that. Uh, we have, don't have any show cards in there, but it's the same functionality. The other thing I want to note for you too, remember that color wheel that we talked about? It's here as well. We also have it in the guide. So if again, you know you want to particular station or whatever that's way down here. Oh, I have to at least have that one to get this channel and it's FNX, for example. Now what we do on this, let me get up to where these are. So you'll be like, you look at this and you're like, why are there two 10.1s? Because this one, if I hover over it, it says KSAZDT. I hover over this one, this says next gen. As we know, for the FCC, five years they have up to after they first broadcast Next Gen, if I'm remembering correctly, they have to have the same on their DT1 or their 1.0 signal as their 3.0 signal. So for a while, it's going to look the very same. Um, but this will tell consumers 
maybe as gen T, um, they've bought some sort of converter dongle or um, next gen set top box, they'll know what they can get for channels. Do we have any questions so far, Lee? None at the moment that I've seen, but uh, feel free to uh, use our Q&A system. If you have questions that come up uh, while Heidi is in our discussions here, uh, go ahead and uh, throw those questions on there and uh, we'll try to address those, especially if they're relative at the time of, of whatever she's discussing. And um, we'll look forward to those questions from our audience. So what's your zip code, Lee? All right, how about 75904? Okay, um, and that's the other thing with this site too. At any point you can go to enter your location, you don't have to go back to the homepage to enter that to do a new results. Now so in I'm your area. Out, I live out in the woods, so. We'll, <laughs> I was just gonna we'll, say. <laughs> we'll see how many that we, we come up. And I don't know if you wanna go ahead and use my address and you're welcome to. You could do that. And that's 1325 Mountain View, all one word, road, and, or just RD. And, well, depends on how it looks up, but uh, try that and see what we get. And yes, I do live on a gated property and my gun is sighted in at the front gate. So no, <laughs> no I, I, our LPTV friends are always welcome at the ranch, so. Well, if you notice when I originally put in the zip code, you're only getting six over the air channels. But now that I put your actual physical address, I'm now getting seven over the air with 17 channels. Yes, because I live much closer to some TV stations where I live versus if I was in town. So this is how it looks on the map. This is what's kind of, I think it's really interesting. Um, so it looks like there's your seven stations and you can always zoom in um, or zoom out, however it is. So if we look at the lineup, <clears throat> it looks like to get all of them, you need that violet, the large um, directional with preamp to be able to get, especially this MBC. Now, can you trick the system? For example, I get more channels than your system is showing me just because I have a really good antenna of about 40 feet. Uh... <laughs> That's a good question. Um, at this point, we only have the 30 and above, but that is where we're looking to continuously um, build that out. And it's not surprising that you receive more at home than what our results show, because again, we are conservative. Exactly. And we actually would expect you'd probably get a few more. Um, but again, there's a lot of factors involved when it comes to antennas as well. You know, are you, is there a big hill or is there something, you know, blocking your home from where that tower is, are you in a valley? So that's and why it was- on a big hill, so that does make a difference. I'm at a very, uh, very high point. And that's where you can even in this map down here, um, <clears throat> I can move this. So let's say, well, actually I'm at right here. It'll reconfigure it all of a sudden. So you can even move on the map to where you want it to go and it will reconfigure then um, that single prediction as far as what stations you would get. Okay, so if I moved it up, I can acquire those Longview, Texas stations that I, that I get. So when I moved it this way, it just picked up, up additional channels. So yep, it's very responsive in that way. And that's why we have a lot of installers that actually use this site. Um, when they're working with uh, local consumers to get set up antennas to try to give them an idea what they can or can't. And they know that at least this will give them, they should at least get these channels from their home address. They'll probably get more, but at least get those. Right. Now, let's say if you were unsure about, well, what, what kind of antenna should I need? You know, I'm reading all this. I'm not quite understanding it right here. Just click on learn about antennas it's gonna to go to a page on the website that goes really more into details about antennas. What do the colors mean? Um, what are some of the myths? So, and that's one of the biggest things that I really wanna point out uh, that I still see in, in marketing and promotions for antennas. There's no such, such thing as an HD antenna. I can tell you, we moved in, in um, September. My husband had a old pair of rabbit ears 
um, that he had when he was a kid. They got passed on from his parents. We put it up to our smart TV and we got great signal. It was awesome. So, um, you know, and next gen TV, again, with next gen, you don't need a new antenna. And that's where we want to make sure that consumers are aware of that, that they're just, they don't have to buy a new antenna. They just need to make sure that the device that they're watching has that 3.0 chip in it to be able to receive it. So they need the 3.0 receiver in that either it's a television, it's a phone, it's, you know, a dongle, a set-top box that can now receive that new signal. All right. Well, we've got a question that's come in from Ruben. Is the data from the FCC database or third-party database? So it's a combination of all of the above. We actually have, so we are always in sync with the FCC database, except when we get stations call us and say, hey, we've just updated our information and updated. We actually have a, a free tool that we provide to local broadcasters. It's called Antenna Tech Specs, where you can actually go in there and update and make sure that your signal prediction parameters match of what you're actually um, broadcasting. Because not only does that directly affect this website, it also affects our website, titantv.com, when consumers put in their zip code to find out what they can watch. Um, we also provide signal prediction services to other companies and antenna manufacturers and things like that. And that also directly affects them. So a lot of times we actually get the information from the station first before we see it updated on the FCC site. But there are some cases where we actually hear it from the FCC, we pull that information in. So it's a combination of multiple. Um, if anything, it's first party data and FCC information. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm gonna enter another one here. Let's go to Nashville. Um, and I'm trying to also go to markets that we know have next gen. The reason that is, is so in Nashville, and I just put a, I just grabbed a uh, zip code. I'm gonna get 25 channels or 25 stations with 92 channels of those. But let's say I just wanna see, I'm thinking about purchasing that new TV that has next gen. Is it gonna be worth my, investment. Well, in this market, there is currently five stations I can get with NextGen. And I can look here, it's a My Fox or My TV Fox, ABC, CBS, ABC, and CW. So it's your five, you know, five major um, channels, affiliations. And there again is your map. Now, what if I'm unsure about? So you can go click on this. What is NextGen TV? What does that mean? We have partnered also with Pearl TV and then ATSC uh, to get some of this information and gather it, put it together so that again, for consumer facing education on what is next gen TV. And it, with this, we also provided two different additional sites that I would recommend that you also look at and you can drive consumers to as well. So the first one down here is this watch next gen TV. This is what the Pearl TV uh, organization is built out and put together. It's a great site. It also, one of the things I like about the site, as you kind of scroll down, it talks about kind of what's on air, which you'll find that through Antenna Web, but it also correlates. They have great relationship with your hardware providers as far as television. So they'll let you know, you know, what are some of the televisions that are out there, the brands, but then also what are some of the benefits that you're going to see? And I know they just released a new study um, that they did about what consumers are most excited about. And one of them that I've been hearing out about a, quite a bit is Voice Plus, which I have a little hard of hearing due to um, a lot of earaches as a child. So one of the things I'm excited about with 3.0 is the capability of I can turn down that background noise and music and increase the audio of the people speaking so I can actually hear them. Um, the other thing that I've heard about that is the capability of you're watching a NASCAR race, for example. You can actually tune it to your favorite driver and their crew talking. And you can, or it's a football game, and you don't want to hear the announcers jibber jabber. You just want to watch the game. You can turn that part off and maybe turn another part off. So another fun thing if you want to learn more about what it's provided. But here's the, what they're talking about all the television so far and the brands that are on board and currently have televisions out with 3.0 receivers. 
And uh, my understanding is we should see a lot of TVs by Christmas or most TVs by Christmas with uh, ATSC 3.0 chipsets. Yes. And I know there's some additional groups that are working with those um, manufacturers too, as far as additional features that would be then promoted and pushed out at CES 2022 that will come out in the televisions in 2022. So I expect even more. And I'm excited once it gets to little old Cedar Rapids, Iowa, that I'm about, I'll purchase the TV at that time and I'll make sure that we can receive it. <laughs> well, Lufkin, Texas is quite a bit a ways, but we'll, we will probably have next gen on LPTV here uh, before oh. our, if our full powers get it, so. And then the last one here is I talked about ATSC. So down here, if you want to actually find out more about those deployments, you know, what's coming up as we're talking about when's going to come, I can tell you Cedar Rapids is not on this list, but this is kept up by the ATSC about what's coming out, when it's coming out. And this was the list that I used then um, prior to this to try to say, okay, are we showing next gen television channels on these ones? So I checked most of the ones that are in the bold orange that are live, yes, we're showing them. Um, one that was interesting was Boise, Idaho. I think it's just something in our system. Those are actually low power. So let me show you what that looks like. So let me go to that zip code. 83701. So if I scroll down, Here's where I talk, these are low powers. So here's one, it's NL instead of the LD or the, um, and it's KBSE and the other one is KCBB. So these are two low powers that are actually now next gen low powers. And that's out of the Boise, Idaho. And that's part of the, if I'm correct, um, Evoca. So that company that's um, promoting that, those um, are two of the signals that they're using. And I know they're looking to continue to use more low power stations. So that's another one. And it looks like we have, Ruben said in Salt Lake City, he, he does get ATS 3.0, but the signals seem weak. He gets audio only. Oh, that's interesting. He's displayed on the channel, no video. Is there a small antenna issue or signal strength? Um, it might be a combination or both. So what I always recommend, uh, do we have, I don't have, do you have a zip code? Ruben, we could put it in here and I can give you some ideas. Sometimes, for example, the antenna, maybe you have it on your north side of the house. Um, but then when you look on the map here, maybe with your zip code and where your house is, you need to put it on the other side of the house. All right. And there's the zip code, 84025. Let me put that in here. 84025. So we're pulling it up here. We have 26 channels, 90 over the air. Let's see what this says. Yeah, so it says you should get four next-gen channels. So it looks like they're all to the south. So that should kind of give you an idea is where is your antenna versus the um, broadcast towers? Do you need to position it differently? And in that view of those, the ones that are broadcasting, so it's gonna be the green. So they look like for the most part, they're over in this area. It must be a mountain. I'm assuming that they're all on top of just based on this. Is there anything else that's maybe blocking that? Um, the other thing is that an indoor antenna or an outdoor antenna. Indoor antennas are proven not to necessarily work as effectively. So maybe you need to look at getting an outdoor antenna and point it in that direction. Um, I know that when my husband put up our antenna and then my in-laws and my parents' antennas a couple years ago. He actually went to antenna web and he's on the roof making sure that he's got the uh, antenna lined up in the direction of at least the most of the stations that we could pick up. Ruben says they're south pointing to the mountaintop at Tower Farm. Yeah, and it could be just that the signal isn't as strong. Um, again, they're all on one host, um, host tower. The other thing is to check out other antennas as well. But again, your 1.0 antenna should be, you can use as a, with your 3.0 signal as well. You shouldn't have to go buy a, a new one just for 3.0 or next gen television. 
And maybe also you can speak with someone from engineering from um, that's working on that particular station to to get a little bit more data, and maybe they can um, would be interested in your data as well. Yeah, I think they would be very um, open to hearing that you are getting that because I don't, you know, a lot of times a lot of these markers there's not even they don't even know if there's even consumers picking up the signal. So now that they know that you're picking it up, they might allow you to do some testing or just kind of. Um, stay in touch with them on those things. All right, well, we've reached the uh, 3.30 mark. And at this point in time, we do call for questions um, or comments officially. So um, as we uh, wrap up another session today, throw your questions in, your, in the uh, question down at the dialog box that's at the bottom of your screen on most of your screens, or at the top if you're using a cell phone uh, Zoom app and um, see if we can stump Heidi today in our question and answer time. So, but this would be. And as we're waiting, I do want to point out. Go ahead. I want to point out if you have a Facebook page, for example, to promote, you can go ahead and maybe put in a, a zip code and you can go ahead and share that directly. Um, you can change, you know, if you, whatever you want to say. And then I can go ahead and say, post this now. So you can post onto your own Facebook and it directs right back to um, Atena Web and gives them that information. It's a good promotion for over the air television. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, we have some questions coming in. So um, that is a great idea, Ruben says. So uh, let's start with Brian. Brian, what was the URL for the total tech specs to submit issues on coverage patterns? Yeah, so what I'm actually gonna drive you to is I'm gonna drive you to our website, um, titantvinc.com. What you're gonna go into is the signal predictions, and then you're gonna click on signal area tools. This is where it will talk about that antenna tech specs. So this is exactly what the tool looks like. You will then just go to the bottom. There is a form here, just fill it out. Put your first email and the company, which would be like your call letters, which are the stations that you want to be able to verify that your signal um, parameters are updated correctly in our system. And then once you get it, you'll get a login and password. It will give you access to here. You're able to update any of those parameters. It also will give you access, access to what we call our signal area map that is also a free tool that allows you to see your DMA counties, board lines, uh, and exclude or include cable. So it's just another uh, free tool that we provide to local broadcasters. All right, Mark, I want to um, know if you could tell us about the Wellco, um, and that was an FTC. Do you know about Wellco and the deceptive? I, I was gonna pull it up here. I am not familiar with that. Anyway, there have been uh, a lot of advertising in regards to, you know, pick up, you know, 100 channels free on your TV set with their antenna and basically the little indoor antenna and you get it at your house and you get two if you get one. So uh, I believe that's what it's in regard to um, their sales and their advertising practices of kind of mislabeling um, that information. Yeah, and we know there are a few of those antennas. The other one, oh no, I just lost it. Is it Clear TV? There's another low end, very low end um, antenna out there that um, we get a lot of inquiries about. And uh, we had noticed they actually had our website on the bottom of their, webs of their website, linking it to ours. Um, we do not represent them. We're not anything part of them. Um, and we're actually work working in process to get them off of that because there is a lot of false advertising related to that particular antenna. All right, Clear TV uh, is one of those that is is doing the same, but uh, marketing it through the big boxes. Yep. So these are the manufacturers, antenna manufacturers that have are approved by the CTA um, that for quality um, antennas. And then these are three of the sponsors that we have on our site that uh, promote their different antennas on that results page. Any other oh, questions? Any other questions out there? Oh, 
as we speak. There, there we go. Okay. Uh, from Ruben, I've used Antenna's Direct products. All my antennas are at least 10 years old. Does the age of the antenna matter? No, it shouldn't. Like I said, we use an old rabbit ears, and, I, and I'm talking okay. old rabbit ears, and it was still working, you know? Um, it was probably 30, 40 years old. It just depends on, are the, is there wear and tear on the antenna? If there's no wear on the antenna, it should work. There shouldn't be any issue with it. Now, I, I will clarify that further. Outdoor antenna is a whole different story. As a yeah. matter of fact, my, my outdoor antenna is a little over five years old and I'm at a point of replacing it. So I'm looking for a replacement for it. Uh, a lot of times the insulators and other things on the antenna wear in the, the sun when, and there is a really big storm going outside my window right now. So uh, yep. outdoor antennas do have, uh, some of them have uh, a longer shelf life than others. Uh, I had a cheaper uh, large antenna outside, so um, I was just noticing it the other day. Uh, the signal is is degrading a little bit, so I'm going to look at uh, replacing that with a more name brand um, from one of your sponsors there on the website. So um, yeah, and that's where we back in '09 we bought a, a really a higher quality outdoor antenna, and I can tell you it lasted till derecho hit here in Iowa in um, August and it really took it out then. So we did buy another um, bigger outdoor antenna again because we want to be able to get those free over the air signals. So yeah, outdoor does go through a little quicker. I know our in-laws too, just because of the weather they get, theirs didn't last as long as ours. So like Lee said, they do take a little bit of beating. All right, and another question has popped in the box. The fly leads, 300 ohm connectors can get corroded, leading to signal degradation. Yes, that Brian is telling us about. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, and I've also got a preamp on the outside of, of, of top too. So being in the weather, it, it ages as well. So, yep. and uh, Ruben, I'm testing a silicon dust ATSC 3.0 tuner is there others on the market? I know there are, it just depends. And I'm trying to think, we don't have any yet on our Atena web site related to 3.0, um, but I know there are some set top boxes out there and, and dongles for that. Um, and I know that the one manufacturers that we've been talking to that NAB in October is gonna be the big one that they're gonna showcase. And then again, um, uh, CES in January. Yeah, I will say there are about a dozen uh, on the market at the moment uh, that I'm aware of. Um, and those, you can readily Google those ATSC3 tuners. Uh, so there, there are several of them available out there. I don't know how good they work, but uh, they, they are out there. I was gonna see if maybe the Pearl site had them, but no, they just kind of list those. I don't think. But definitely the yeah, silicon they're... dust seems to be the, the most popular one out there. Yeah. All right, some more questions. questions. Is that all of our questions? It looks like it is at the moment. And um, so what else do you have for us, Heidi? So the other thing I'd point out too is we have news. So we're constantly adding on this. We're also right now working with an article or working with uh, Pearl TV to come with the article. Again, it's consumer facing. Another person I would try to um, direct you to is uh, Tyler, the antenna man. He does some really good videos um, for consumers on how to set up antennas, which ones are good, which ones aren't bad, or which ones are bad. Um, he's got a whole YouTube channel. And he also, if you have a consumer that needs help setting up, he does have on his website, uh, he does do those services. And they, they don't actually have to be from Pennsylvania where he's out of, he can do them from anywhere else. Um, so a lot of times if someone reaches out to us on Facebook and I have questions, how do I set my antenna? 
I actually direct him to attend a man, to Tyler, uh, to work with them on that. The other thing I always say, there might be some local installers in the area that might be able to help with that as well. But this is another resource. So there are a few, if you go to this news channel, there are a few of his that I actually put up here that I thought were really relevant um, to the antenna web users related to antennas, um, some myths and things like that. So there's some additional information on here. Um, also, if they want more information on under our viewing options on the website, it goes over some additional links and some third parties on, you know, what are, what's the best video streaming service, how to calculate those different things, you know, 2020 best streaming TV providers. So those are just some other ones that consumers have asked, you know, some for information. So it's just another page for us to provide education. With that as well, if you have a site or you know another good site that would be good for us to push out to consumers to let them know, send it my way and we can go ahead and add it onto the site. And speaking of cutting the cord, the L the ATBA just recently voted in our last board meeting to welcome in OTT under our umbrella. So uh, we, we felt that it was um, a strong enough uh, uh, something for us to, uh, to uh, hold hands with in regards to our OTT uh, companies and friends out there uh, with OTA. And uh, so we're bringing them on board underneath our umbrella. And uh, so you'll see some of those uh, companies. Erwin Podhazer has rejoined the ATBA board. He was one of the four, uh, founding board members of the <laughs> uh, when he was in the television world. Now he's in the OTT world and he is back on our board of directors and uh, will be, be bringing some of those uh, sponsors to us. And, uh, and some involvement that uh, we can get involved with OTT with our stations as well. Many of our station folks out there are already providing OTT services and OTT services mm -hmm. part of their brand and their TV channel. All right, before we wrap up, what else do you got? That actually lead me right into one of our next phases that we're gonna add to Atena Web is OTT because we get a lot of those questions. So. Again, if you have an OTT platform that you want to promote or um, want to get involved, um, that's something, again, that's going to be another a next phase that we're going to add to a ton of web for consumers that want to kind of combine the OTT and the OTT world at home. Excellent. So that will, will kind of give us a full package of channels. That also allows us, while people are shopping for OTT solutions, to be able to see the OTA available to them as well so that we, we stay on the grid and we stay in the programming and um, our stations continue to be viable resources for the public out there. All right, well, I am going to, if that's all the screens you've got, I'm going to yep. see if I can share my screen for the moment and see if I can do this better than I did at the very beginning of the program. Um, so I did a terrible job, actually, Picking screens when you use PowerPoint is a little difficult, especially when you've got four across the, the board. Yeah. So tell me, what, what do you see? I see your PowerPoint slide as if I was just viewing it. Excellent. Nothing else. So, um, so that is what is supposed to show up there. And I wanted to recognize our sponsors of the ATBA. And uh, you can also join the ATBA and sponsor the ATB as also. You can go to our website at broadcastingalliance.org. You can see our membership information there, but we wanna thank the sponsors, including Titan TV for being a sponsor of the Broadcasting Alliance, the LPTV and OTT Industry Association. We are looking forward again to our uh, NAB uh, LPTV and OTT event at NAB that is scheduled for October the 11th. That's back on Monday night uh, as usual. And um, just in a different time period of the year on October 11th. And uh, we'll be at the West Gate, currently scheduled in Ballroom A. So that is a change from the, from the past ballrooms we've been in. Uh, much bigger space. So we want to invite everybody to be sure and come out and those in our industry also to be sponsors 
of the ATBA and to be sponsors of that event. So I'm going to uh, say bye for now and appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks on another ATBA Wednesday webinar.